Hey, I'm Paul, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to scuba dive. Let's dive in. A word of caution, scuba diving is a dangerous sport and you need to get qualified at your local dive center before you can head off on your own diving adventures. An open water diver course takes four or five days to complete and so I won't be able to condense all that information into this video. I will however pull out the most important things that you need to know in order to learn how to scuba dive. I'll show you how pressure works, the equipment that you're going to use when you go scuba diving. I'll touch on the three most important skills that you'll use on every single dive you do from now on. And I'll very quickly touch on the dangers of scuba diving so that you have an understanding of what the risks are and how to avoid them. Please leave a comment in the comment section, like this video, subscribe to this channel and check out my other videos. The first topic to cover is pressure. Essentially, the way pressure works is the deeper you go, the greater the pressure is. Water can't be compressed, but air can. And so as you descend, any air spaces will be compressed or squeezed. What this means is you'll take the same amount of air and squeeze it into a smaller space. It's a little bit like getting on a bus with a lot of people. You all have a lot of space when you're standing around waiting for the bus, and as soon as you get on the bus, you're all squeezed in and compacted tight together. The same thing happens with air. As you descend, that same volume of air is going to be compressed. When you're scuba diving, there are three major air pockets that you need to be concerned about. The first one is your lungs. The air in your lungs will be compressed. As you breathe underwater, you're going to start to breathe compressed air. This doesn't pose a problem as long as you continue to breathe normally and never hold your breath. The danger comes in when you take a breath of compressed air when you're at depth. If air gets compressed when you descend, it's also going to expand as you ascend. If you ascend while holding your breath, you could potentially rupture a lung. The next airspace you need to be concerned about is your middle ear or your eustachian tube. Your eustachian tube is an air pocket that leads to your middle ear. As you descend, the air in your eustachian tube is going to be compressed and you need to equalize that as you're descending. You do this by simply blocking your nose and blowing gently against your blocked nose. You'll feel air being squeezed into your eustachian tubes as you do this. This is called equalizing and it's important to equalize early and often during your descent. If you leave it too long, it becomes harder to equalize and you'll need to ascend a little bit, equalize your ears and then continue your descent. The third air pocket that you have is the air in your mask. As you descend, the air in your mask is gonna get compressed and you'll need to equalize that airspace. You do this by blowing air out through your nose. That's the very reason that diving masks have a nose pocket so that you can equalize the air in your mask by blowing out through your nose. When you're ready for a dive and you're standing on a beach, you have one atmosphere of air pressure acting on you. That makes sense because the earth has an atmosphere and that atmosphere creates pressure. Air being lighter than water will create less pressure than when you go into water. In the Earth's atmosphere, the higher you go, the lower the atmospheric pressure will be. And that's why you hear climbers talking about how thin the air is, and that's because there's a lower pressure. The opposite is also true. As you descend into water, the pressure increases. And because water is denser than air, the pressure is going to increase at a far greater rate than the Earth's atmospheric pressure. Consider when you're standing on the beach, you have one atmosphere of pressure. In water, for every 10 meters you descend, you will gain one additional atmosphere. At the surface, you have one atmosphere. When you get down to 10 meters, you now have two atmospheres, which is the Earth's atmospheric pressure plus the water pressure. For every 10 meters you descend after that, you'll gain an additional atmosphere. Once you get down to 20 meters, you now have three atmospheres of pressure acting on you. Because we know how pressure changes between the surface of the water as we descend, we know that when we get down to 10 meters and there's now two atmospheres of pressure acting on us, we've doubled the pressure. And that means that we would have halved the volume of any airspace. So if you were to take a breath of fresh air at the surface and hold that breath, dive down to 10 meters, the surrounding water pressure would have doubled. And so the volume of air in your lungs would have halved. That doesn't mean that you have half as much air. It means that the air that you have in your lungs is squeezed into half the space. The other factor affecting compressed air is nitrogen. The air that we breathe has approximately 79% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. 
your body's going to use the oxygen. We call this metabolizing oxygen. You could refer to it as burning oxygen. Your body doesn't store oxygen. However, it does store nitrogen. Your body will start to absorb nitrogen until the nitrogen in your body equals the atmospheric pressure. So when you're standing on the beach, you have one atmosphere of pressure acting on your body. When you descend down to 10 meters, the atmospheric pressure is going to have doubled. If you spent long enough at 10 meters, your body would absorb enough nitrogen until it is equal to two atmospheres of pressure. Your body's perfectly capable of of absorbing nitrogen. However, when you ascend, that nitrogen needs to come out of your body until it equals the surrounding atmospheric pressure. When you descend, your body absorbs nitrogen. When you ascend, your body expels nitrogen. And that brings us to the bends. The bends potentially occurs when your body starts to expel nitrogen. You've absorbed micro bubbles of nitrogen. If you ascend too quickly, those micro bubbles could accumulate and form larger bubbles. Those larger bubbles could potentially get lodged in your joints, in your circulatory system, going to your heart, your lungs, or your brain. The effects of those micro bubbles can be dangerous. If you'd like to know more about how pressure works for scuba divers, I'll link a video here. In addition to the air spaces in your lungs and your eustachian tubes, there are also four main air spaces in your equipment. But your mask is the one major air space that you need to consider. The next air spaces that you need to consider are the air in your BCD, the micro bubbles of air trapped in your wetsuit, and the air in your cylinder. And that brings us to equipment. The equipment that you use when you scuba diving can be broken down into two main elements, soft equipment and hard equipment. Soft equipment is equipment that you could use to go snorkeling as well as scuba diving. This would be your mask, your snorkel and fins. And please note that these are fins and not flippers. Flipper is a dolphin from a movie. And then you have your snorkel. Other parts of soft equipment are your wetsuit and your weight belt. Your wetsuit is there to keep you warm and it does that by trapping a layer of cold water between your body and the wetsuit. Your body temperature then heats this water. The micro bubbles trapped in your neoprene wetsuit will create a barrier between the cold water outside and the warm water trapped between your body and the wetsuit. If your wetsuit is too large and water can flow freely into your wetsuit, your body won't be able to heat up that inflow of water and so you'll get colder a lot quicker. It's important to have a wetsuit that fits snugly but not too tight. Next element is your weight belt. Because your neoprene wetsuit is made up of thousands of tiny bubbles, those bubbles are essentially going to create positive buoyancy. They're going to make you float. And so you need to wear a weight belt to offset that positive buoyancy. Your weight belt is lead on a belt. And that lead is going to create a negative buoyancy. It's going to make you sink. However, it's important to get the right balance between positive and negative buoyancy. When you're at the surface, you should be able to hold a breath and float at eye level. And when you exhale, you should start to sink slowly. The next element of equipment is the hard equipment. The hard equipment is your scuba unit. Scuba stands for self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. Your scuba unit is made up of three elements. Your cylinder, which holds high pressure air. Your regulator, which takes that high pressure and reduces it to an ambient pressure and delivers it to you as you need it. And your BCD or buoyancy control device, which is there to neutralize your buoyancy. Let's start with the cylinder. Your cylinder is going to typically be around 10 liters. Your cylinder will be made of steel or aluminium. If you're in the US, this would be referred to as aluminum. The air in your cylinder is exactly the same air that you breathe at surface. However, when the compressors are filling your cylinder, they'll extract all the moisture out of the air. They do that so that moisture doesn't cause corrosion on the inside of the cylinder. A scuba cylinder is going to be filled with around 200 bar of pressure. The next element in hard equipment is your regulator. Your regulator will be broken down into a few different elements. If you consider that your car tire has two bar of pressure, then 200 bar of pressure in your cylinder is a very high pressure. The first element in your regulator is called a first stage, and it's there to take the high pressure from your cylinder from 200 bar to around 10 bar above ambient pressure. We then refer to that as low pressure. That low pressure will then be delivered to you through the second stage and the second stage takes the air pressure from around 10 bar above ambient pressure and delivers it on demand to you. As you breathe in the valve opens and delivers air 
and as you breathe out the valve closes so that you can expel the air that you breathe out. The second stage also has a purge valve on the front of the regulator. If you press that purge button it'll open the valve and deliver a continuous flow of air. The next element in your regulator is a low pressure hose that attaches to your BCD. That low pressure hose is there to deliver air from the cylinder into the BCD so that you can inflate your BCD. By inflating your BCD you'll be able to control your buoyancy. The final element on your regulator are high pressure gauges. Your high pressure gauges are going to take a reading directly from the cylinder and tell you exactly how much air is in your cylinder. It'll give that to you in a pressure reading. When the cylinder is full, it'll read 200 bar. The final element of your hard equipment is your BCD or buoyancy control device. Your buoyancy control device is there to do exactly that. It controls your buoyancy. If your wetsuit is positively buoyant because of the thousands of tiny air bubbles in the neoprene, and then you put on a lead weight belt which makes you sick, you'll need to be able to fine tune your buoyancy when you're underwater. As you're descending, you'll slightly inflate your BCD to offset the negative buoyancy that your weight belt has created. This will allow you to hover seemingly weightless above the reef. That brings us to skills. There are essentially three main skills that you're gonna use on every dive that you do. Clearing your mask, clearing your regulator, and controlling your buoyancy. As you descend and the air in your mask gets compressed, that can sometimes Times cause a bit of condensation on the inside of the lens. You want to be able to clear that condensation and so you can simply let a little bit of water into your mask, swish it around to clear the condensation and then clear the mask and continue your dive. Also throughout most dives that you'll do you'll get a little bit of water into your mask and so you'll want to know how to clear your mask. Clearing your mask is straightforward. You want to replace the water in your mask with air. Air is going to always float to the surface and so what you need to do is take a deep breath in off your regulator hold the top of the mask to make sure no air escapes out of the mask and then breathe out through your nose while tilting your head back. Tilting your head back means that the water will be able to escape out the lowest points of the mask and the air you breathe out through your nose will fill the mask and push the water out. That'll do two things. It'll equalize your mask, which you need to do as you're descending, and it'll clear any water out of your mask. If you want to know more about how to clear your mask, I'll link a video here. The next skill you need to be able to do is to clear your regulator. As I mentioned, the air in your cylinder is going to be filled with dry compressed air. Because the air that you're breathing in is dry, it's going to dry out your mouth. You may want to wet your mouth during the dive. You can do that by taking your regulator out of your mouth, swishing a little bit of water through your mouth, spitting it out, and then putting your regulator back in. When you take your regulator out of your mouth, it'll fill with water and so you'll need to be able to clear that water out. There are two ways to do this. The first way, you put your regulator back in and blow through the regulator with whatever air you have in your lungs. That'll clear the regulator and you can carry on breathing. The first breath you take should be a cautious breath. Simply hold your tongue to the roof of your mouth and breathe slowly in. That way any water still in the regulator will be blocked by your tongue and you can blow that out and continue your dive. The second way to clear your regulator is to put the regulator back into your mouth and push the purge button on the front of the regulator. Simply hold your tongue against the roof of your mouth and press the purge button and the air from your cylinder will blast any water out of the regulator. One of the main rules of scuba diving is to continuously breathe and never hold your breath. That means when you take your regulator out of your mouth, in order to avoid holding your breath, simply blow a small stream of bubbles, a little bit like when you whistle. If you want to know more about how to clear your regulator, I'll link a video here. The third skill you'll use on every dive is controlling your buoyancy. We've already said that a wetsuit is positively buoyant, a weight belt is negatively buoyant, and so you need to be able to neutralize the difference between those two elements. You do that by adding air into your BCD. As you descend, you add a small amount of air, and as you ascend, that air is gonna expand, and so you let that air out of your BCD. Throughout your dive, as you change depth, you'll either add or subtract air from your BCD. Your low pressure inflator hose from your regulator will attach to your BCD. That means you can use air from your cylinder to add into your BCD. You do that by pressing the button on the low pressure inflator. You'll know that your buoyancy is neutral when you breathe in and start to ascend and breathe out and start to descend. The most confusing thing for new divers is that as you breathe in there's a slightly delayed reaction to when you start to ascend and so you're inclined to add too much air. The important thing to do is to add a little bit of air and then breathe in and breathe out until you can feel how much that air has impacted your buoyancy. You can then fine tune it by either adding a little bit more air or letting a little bit of air out of your BCD. 
buoyancy control is part science and part art. It'll take you a number of dives before you're comfortable controlling your buoyancy. If you want to know more about how to control your buoyancy, I'll link a video here. That brings us to the dangers of scuba diving. There are upwards of 10 different reasons why scuba diving is a dangerous sport. The three main dangers for scuba divers all revolve around pressure. One, when you're descending, the air in your eustachian tube is going to be compressed and you'll need to equalize that airspace by blocking your nose and blowing gently. That'll force air into your eustachian tubes and equalize that airspace. Probably the biggest danger for scuba divers is a burst lung. If air gets compressed when you're descending and it expands when you're ascending, that means any air trapped in your lungs if you hold your breath will expand and rupture your lung. That means it's important to continuously breathe and never hold your breath. The third major danger for scuba divers is probably one you're most familiar with, and that is the bends or decompression illness. The bends happens when nitrogen in your body starts to expand while you're ascending and form into bubbles that could be trapped in your joints or your circulatory system. The only way to treat the bends is to get into a recompression chamber, descend to depth, and then ascend slowly while breathing a high proportion of oxygen to flush that nitrogen out of your system. If you want to know more about the dangers of scuba diving, I'll link a video here. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something about how to scuba dive. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment section, like this video, subscribe to this channel, check out my other videos, and I'll see you in the next video.